Hi everyone, welcome back to episode 17 of this vlog about growing a tiny tropical garden in the south of the UK. The weather this week has been incredible. It's been so warm and sunny and it's really great for bringing on the garden. The closer I look, the more signs there are that things are growing and buds are starting to form and we're going to start to get that summer display. These orange flowers just keep coming and they are so intense. And I hope you're as pleased as me to know that the geranium madarens that we've been following over the past few weeks is showing promising signs that the flowers are about to open. Now if you look really closely, each bud is starting to show a flush of pink. So if we carry on with this warm weather, I hope it's going to put on its display in the next couple of weeks. And now that the days are getting longer and the weather's warmer, we're all likely to have lots and lots of grass clippings building up. Now I've got this nifty trick on how you can use them that will help the garden and it's not your compost heap. In a bamboo forest, the plants are likely to be fed by the calms and bamboo leaves continually falling on the floor. But that doesn't happen when I've got them planted in a container. The leaves just fall all over the patio. So I tried this little trick last year and it seemed to work a treat. So I'll share it with you this year. I take back the stones that I used as a mulch just to suppress weeds and I apply a thin dusting of fish blood and bone just for added fertilizer. And on top of that, I'll add a thick layer of my grass clippings. This not only acts as a mulch to suppress weeds, and it also contains water and stops moisture leaving the pot. But as it breaks down, the high nitrogen content of the grass will really help the bamboo grow away. And the best bit is, once you've covered it back up with the stones, it only takes a few weeks and the grass has completely disappeared. Like I said, I did this last year and when I've uncovered the stones, there is no sign of grass underneath, so it's worked a treat. I'll definitely be doing this to all of the bamboo I have in containers. And I found this little chrysalis while I was doing this job on the bamboos. And I'm really happy about this because I really wanted to encourage wildlife when we started our garden. Have you got any ideas what it might be? And that treat of a tree fern that we put into the garden last week is starting to unfurl its new fronds. Which is good news because the old fronds are succumbing to the shock of coming out of a polytunnel and being planted into our garden. I'll cut these off as soon as the old fronds are established. I'm making a conscious effort not to clear away old plant material too soon because I've seen birds like this little robin use it to build his nest. But it's really not going to be too long before the new growth takes centre stage. Look at the acid green on this Huchero lime marmalade. You might remember I divided this because it was succumbing to vine weevil last year. I had to do the same for this Huchera coral bells and it's got this really amazing intense red foliage. The perennial sedums that I planted into the rocky walls of the stream last year is starting to show new growth which I'm really pleased about because I'm worried they weren't going to survive. And those ferns I rescued from a customer's garden and elegantly unfurling their new fronds for this season. They look great coming up through the mulch I applied last week. You might remember me showing you how I prepared to store this Colocasia escalanta over winter. I'll be honest, there was mould, it was soggy, and I'd given up and chucked it around the back of the shed. But here's how it looked in the summer. I felt really sad that I wouldn't be able to have another plant like this because I really thought I'd lost it. And I must have put it outside in December and it's been on the soil all that time. But when I looked closer, there was green signs of growth. It was still alive and it had been cast away in snow and sub-zero temperatures. So now I need to start preparing to try and grow on this plant this season. Colocasias really are fantastic for tropical, jungly looking, gigantic foliage, especially around the edges of a stream or pond. So I started the process of breaking apart all of the new growth points so that I could pot them on and try and grow them as multiple plants for this coming year. But as you know, this is a tiny tropical garden and I don't have a greenhouse or cold frame. 
but I do have some vacant spots in this terracotta pot that's currently home to my buddleia. I popped one part of the collocasia into each of the vacant spots of this terracotta pot. I'm not doing it too deeply at the moment, but just enough to encourage some rooting. I'll pop them on after this and once any chance of frost has passed. I was also pleased to see that some of the evergreen cuttings that I'd taken from just hedge cuttings last year have all taken. I put them in this terracotta pot and I just left them over winter outdoors. I didn't really pay much attention to it. But I've managed to successfully propagate Acupa japonica, which is this variegated plant, which has a fantastic little root system on it already, as well as some laurel. I tried to propagate the laurel because I want to plant it along the wall on the left hand side of the garden to form a dense evergreen hedge. It's sort of a looser boundary than the fences and walls that are currently visible and I don't really like. You can see the line of successful cuttings that I've planted along this wall and once they take I'll remove the chicken wire, the bricks, the wood and I'll paint the old tired fence. And this huchera that I just stuck into the pot it's also rooted and there's signs of new growth, so I'll find a nice spot for this. In fact, I decided to plant it under the deck, along the path that leads in and out of our garden. Hopefully it'll establish here, alongside the Alcomilla mollis. Another plant that I've managed to get more of for free is this Acorus grass. It's fantastic and evergreen and just seems to keep growing and growing. I'm going to have a go at dividing it because I'd like it to line the entire edge of the path. The golden variegation on the edge of the leaves is just fantastic at brightening up dark corners and it works really well as a contrast against darker foliage like the cannas that I was growing last year. Now I've just divided it by pushing a trowel in between what I think are rhizomes on the grass and it comes away well with a little bit of root system attached to each growing point which is fantastic so I can break this up multiple times and get separate individual plants from it. In fact I had a great success dividing this plant and I've got plenty now to spread around the garden and do more than just line the garden path. So you can see the original clump of grass that we had here and the gap that I'd like to fill with this new divided plant. It's worked a treat and really didn't cost me a penny. I massively encourage you to have a go at dividing or propagating your plants by cuttings. It's a fantastic way of building up your plant stock. And the other way, of course, is by sowing and germinating your own seeds. Here's the selection of amaranthus seeds that I've sowed to grow as annuals for the garden this year. They've germinated really well in that new windowsill propagator that I got, and it's time for me to prick them out and pot them on. Now I'm just using a stick to gently loosen the soil around the roots of the seedlings, but be careful not to do too much damage to the roots because you really want to transfer as much as you can. Be sure to only hold your seedlings by their leaves. If you hold them by the stem, you'll do too much damage to the vascular system and it's likely to die and drop them right in, all the way up to the first leaves. Potting them on like this into organic multi-purpose compost will provide strong and healthy growth. And again, as I'm tight on space, I've done two seedlings per pot. I can either thin it out or pot them on again as they grow away. And after a little bit of persuasion, my wife very kindly let me use one of these plastic underbed storage boxes as a little greenhouse just to grow on the seeds indoors and then use it as a cold frame when I bring them out. It's little tricks like this that are really useful when you're as limited on space as I am. And because it's been so warm and dry this week, some of the plants are actually starting to show signs of stress. Now admittedly, I only planted these in the past few months, so their root system hasn't really developed yet. But it's definitely time to get the hose pipe out and do an occasional bit of watering. And I've even set up the patio chairs, just in case the sun shines when I'm home from work. And according to everybody who commented on the post on Instagram, it is not too soon.
So that's how the tiny tropical garden is looking right at the end of March after a beautiful week of glorious sunshine and surprisingly warm heat. It looks like this year is going to be another year of fantastic weather. As always, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and comment below if you've got any tips or questions.